Hello, I'm Mark Ronson. Welcome to my house. We're in Los Feliz, Los Angeles, California. I moved into uh, this place about two and a half years ago. I walked in and pretty much the minute I saw this garden, I was like, this is really beautiful. And it's also, you sort of have a fantasy a little bit about what Los Angeles is. It's certainly it. So this house, I'm told is Spanish. The first time I saw it, it feels so beautiful and expansive growing up in tiny crowded apartments. And so I walked in and this place felt very wonderful and open. I didn't want to mess too much with the juju of what it is. I mean, if you have all this beautiful Spanish tile and this stuff, there's no point trying to rip it off and putting like a marble floor down. And that's kind of just been the MO about this house. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. So I'm not sure the name of the artist here. No, I'm just kidding, it's Keith Haring. I think growing up in New York in the 80s, there's just something very warm and fuzzy about just seeing the outlines in the classic Keith Haring. And then obviously it was so influenced by, you know, early hip hop culture in New York and break dancing and all this stuff. So I had this stand built because I just really love the idea of being able to just stand this here. So this is the living room. I guess you can tell I'm sort of into patterns. I like those curtains. I like that print for the couch. Until I kind of got this rug for the room, it was really a little all over the place. Might be someone's idea of a Technicolor nightmare, but I dig it. This piano is rad because it plays itself. As you can imagine, a whole bunch of friends come over and like the gag is that everyone sits behind the piano and's like, Off. It feels like every time I'm like killing a piano player. Oh yeah, all these things are, you know, in here are things that mean something to me or important for some reason. I don't know why I've just always loved that. It's Judy Garland. I've always loved that one. Um, that's my sisters, Charlotte and Samantha, me and Lady Gaga playing guitar. This is my favorite thing in here. Moise Kiesling, he was like an Eastern European painter who does this thing where the eyes are always a bit big and there's something super surreal about the face. This was weirdly a print that we had on a sofa in the house in London and now it's a wallpaper here. I've probably eaten in here twice in my entire life. I put some stuff on the table just to at least make it look like people come in here occasionally. This was when Andy Warhol started doing the Campbell soup cans. Campbell's actually turned the print into a dress that you could get in the 60s or whenever it was if you sent in enough proof of purchases from Campbell's soup cans. I wear it occasionally, but usually it just stays around the mannequin. I imagine in the 30s this was like, operator, get me Trafalgar or whatever, something 24. This is David Muller and I went into Bruno Mars' house. He had a similar one. And so I contacted the artist and he said, if you send me 12 or 13 of your favorite record spines, I'll, I'll make you a new one. And, he, and the thing is that he makes it so it's the same height as the person that he's doing it for. You know, I didn't want to put like The Clash and Led Zeppelin and the sort of more obvious things, even if I do love that. This is the kitchen, and I guess you would call this a sort of breakfast area. This is this wallpaper that, there's a red one that's quite iconic and is in like a lot of Woody Allen and like Wes Anderson films. And I think it's kind of nice in yellow because it makes it sunny. Well, I guess sometimes when you're decorating a house and then you look at it when it's all finished, you're like, oh, I guess I really like yellow and zebras. And then if you kind of look here, Weirdly, even though that's like this Lichtenstein print, it actually looks the same as the zebras jumping through the air in here if you kind of look at it in a bit more of an abstract way. So that was another complete accident. Being nostalgic for the 80s and 90s and the music from that era, I put this up because the design of the old cassette almost looks like some kind of installation piece, but it's just a bunch of unopened cassettes. What I notice is whenever people come over here, this always ends up being the island that people congregate. I feel like a good kitchen is just like, if it has good energy, that's just where everybody ends up hanging out. I mean, I have a jazzy menorah right here for my jazzy Jews. This is to play the cassettes, tape deck. What's in here, the B-52s. Well, we won't be able to clear that, so let's just turn that off overlay some royalty free music there. So as you can see, we got a really good price on the wallpaper. Somebody told me that 
you should put your prized possession or the thing that you want to show off the most about in your guest bathroom because that's where the most people will see it. This is a letter from my hero, favorite person of all time, Stevie Wonder. Please stop stealing all my ideas. Oh, that's weird. I've never even read it before. I thought this might be a nice place to put three things that meant something to me. So this was a gift from Bruno and I didn't actually know Bruno back then. He performed Valerie at a tribute because it was the MTV Awards and it happened right, sort of right after she passed. And then when I became friends with him, when we worked together, he gave me this as a present. I'd like to think in some special way she brought us together. Thanks for everything, Mark, your brother, Bruno. What Bruno was saying is because of the music I made with Amy, you know, in some way she definitely did bring us together. This is a song called Uptown Funk that I made with Bruno. This is an album called Record Collection, which probably seven people have heard of. And this is like the, the kid who's not as successful like or popular, but you just, you, you root for him. This is the TV room or, and sitting room. When I came to the house, everything was very white in the classic Spanish sense of what these houses are like. I left it how it was for a while. And then I started to miss some of the more, I guess just like English kind of elements. So I got this green silky wallpaper and then ended up painting the ceiling green to match it. These are like sports trophies, but for music. It's always like a bit of a thing like, okay, how obnoxious is it to like flex. I don't want to put them too much in an obvious place, yet I am proud of them and I might need to impress people when they come to my house every now and then. I should take that off. I got these in the mail as a present from somebody who said that I should put these pants on the Oscar to make it more presentable. And what's cool about behind here is they had all these, in the 20s during Prohibition, they had these like secret hidden bars in the houses, so you would slide the bookshelf and then, you know, drink your Manhattan or whatever it was. I also use it as a panic room. This was built, these record shelves, because records are probably like the, the biggest mainstay in my life since I've been 18. And some of the records I can just like even see in the shelf and I can recognize from the spine and remember where I bought it, how old I was. This is the garden. I think it's probably the nicest part of the house. I mean, it was certainly when I came out here and I think because of the fountains and the trees and all the flowers and everything, it almost feels like you're in some kind of European villa. This was designed by the guy apparently that did the Beverly Hills Hotel bungalows. So I guess this has like a little bit of that old Hollywood charm or that's what I read on Wikipedia. The guest house is actually really lovely. It's Square footage is bigger than anywhere I've ever lived in my adult life. And then this is the patio, which is also one of the things I fell in love with. This is a cool Magnavox record player from the 50s. There's a lot of random record players all over this house, actually. And then that I found on eBay. It's not related to me at all. It's just a gas station sign. This is a friend of mine who actually used to be a rapper in this group called Plastic Little. In the Bauer song Harlem Shake, it is his voice saying Harlem Shake, which is actually the sample, which is very random. He's also an artist. The people who lived in the house before me had this as a kid's room, and so they had the Beatrix Potter wallpaper, so I just kind of liked it. It was cute, so I left it. I have a big family, so there's always people coming to stay with me from either England or New York or wherever, and friends and musicians and people traveling in and out of town, so it's nice to have a bunch of extra rooms that you can have people stay in. Um, it's also nice when they leave. This is my bedroom. I guess the most obvious thing is the fact that it's all blue. Like I said, the house being all white was very lovely and airy, and I, I, you know, I thought it would be nice to take some areas and make it a little bit more cozy or feel a bit more like English and warm. There's sort of like cool artsy books and then like shove the self-help books like down there where no one can see them. This is kind of nice because this is like, I didn't actually realize until I lived in this house for a little while that 
I did actually have a view because I thought I didn't, but at night through this balcony, that's where you see like that classic Michael Mann, like LA cityscape. This is my bathroom. This is sort of my wall of shame of paintings that I accidentally bought on the internet thinking that they were real. When I moved in and you know, they're showing you, oh, and we have a steam shower. You're like, who cares? Like I'm never gonna use a steam shower. And then about after a year of living in here, I used it for the first time. It's actually quite wonderful. So now I'm happy that I have it. I invite friends over and we sit and sweat and complain about stuff. Thank you for coming. I hope you've enjoyed this tour of my house. I have to go to work now, so just excuse me. Thank you. <laughs>